Woof. Okay, so here is the first of two new dev blogs that came out yesterday on January 24th. I did not cover them on stream yesterday because I didn't realize they were there. My bad for not checking, but we have now seen that they're there. This is going to be uh, our first. I know what's in them as far as what the subject is, but I don't know all the details. So it's going to be our first read through and off the cuff reactions. Uh, there may be in there may be inconsistencies or incorrect things in here. That's because it's a live immediate reaction. So let's uh, let's check and see. This first one uh, that came out is regarding changes to test ships in closed test 13.0. And uh, Wargaming, this is a very short one, saying based on testing results, we're applying, the, applying changes to Commonwealth cruisers. So this is our new line of sub-hunting cruisers. Um, let's see what they're going to say. Commonwealth cruisers, Red Fort Tier 5, Hobart Tier 6, Auckland Tier 8, what happened to the tier seven? Encounter tier nine and Cerberus or Cer Cerberus, Cerberus tier 10 reduced the splash area of the depth charges. The radius in which flooding and fires may occur to be equal to the damage area. Okay. I'm thinking I've seen some graphs that shows like you got, you know, like a direct hit area and then a splash damage. Like if you drew three circles, there's like a direct area, a splash damage area. And then maybe there's, there might be a third area that causes, um, it can cause like fire or flooding, but does no damage. Maybe that kind of thing. Um, I think I've got that right. I'm not hundred percent sure. And I'm not going to search it out cause I don't remember when and where I saw it, but uh, sounds like they're just drawing in that outside circle to make this thing be uh, two circles that you can only cause a flood or a fire if you either get a direct hit or splash damage. Um, makes me wonder if they're going to do this for other ship types later on or if it's just because these are supposed to be stronger sub hunters. Don't know. Uh, but it does say other cruisers in the Commonwealth Cruiser Line will receive this change at a later date. So that would deal with the Tier 7 that's not on this list. What is special to the Tier 7 that makes them not be able to make the change as quickly as on the other ones? Not sure what that's about. But anyway, that's your first dev blog from... Uh, January 24th regarding changes to the test ships, the basically the Commonwealth cruisers. But there's another, and this one's a biggie, and it's regarding, uh, well, let's just go to it. This is regarding balance changes. Now, you know what I try to do when we have balance changes, uh, I'll have a stream or two where we come in and we play these ships that got balance changes. We'll run through and play a game in each one of them to see what we think, see if we can maybe tell a little difference or something. Sometimes you won't really very much. Sometimes you will. Um, so let's see what this is all about. Public test 13.1 balance changes. Uh, Wargaming says we're applying balance changes to many ships on uh, an analysis of both their combat statistics as well as extensive player feedback. Um, Ryujo, Tier 6. Well, let's see here. Stock squadron aircraft prep time increased. Researchable aircraft prep time increased. Torp damage decreased. See, that's the best thing about the Ryu Joe is the torps. Um, so basically, they are making it, what would the right word be? Um, a little easier to deplane, or at least make it so you're you're not you don't have forever planes to send out. Maybe I guess, and then they're nerfing the damage. This is a pretty big nerf for Ryujo now. Ryujo, and I'm going to say not just Ryujo, but Tier Six carriers in general are strong. I have as bad as I am. I have fantastic win rates in my Tier Six carriers in all of them. 
uh, because they're all pretty good. Um, so it's not like this hasn't been known for a while. So uh, glad to see they're finally doing a little something about it. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. But uh, yeah, next up is the Tier 10 Hayate. So this is the ship that I that uh, and I think others have said this too. So I'm you know, borrowing this as much as I am. It's not anything that that I'm making up on the cuff. Is it's the ship that's not 100 percent sure what it wants to be. Uh, does it know if it wants to be a Shima or a Haragumo? Um, so it's got, I think it's got the same caliber of guns as the Haragumo, if I remember right, and um but a better reload than the shima so let's uh i need to bring up the um ship filter tool because we might want to look at um some of these ships we might want to look at this so hayate um what I'm curious about is to see consumables because I see it says torpedo reload boost consumable move to a separate slot. Oh, okay. So, oh, so in Hayate, trying to figure this thing out, move to a sec separate slot. So, did you have to choose between smoke and TRB? Let's go to uh, let's go to World of Warships and see. See that at tier 10. Hayate, what's it look like right now? Oh, yeah, you do have to choose between smoke and TRB. So they're saying that now you're not. You have both. Okay, that makes a big difference. That makes a big difference for sure. Um... And they're dropping the reload from 4 to 3.7, which is also interesting. If you uh, look at these Japanese destroyers, um, you know, you're looking at what? If I compare Hayate, Hayate has a four second reload with the 127s. Um, whereas Shima has a 5.7. The other thing that Hayate has is a significantly better turret traverse. So it, it definitely is a better, um, way better gunboat than Shima. Um, about the same range. Not, not the DPM the Haragumo has, of course, but, uh, but still pretty good. Now, if I look at just strictly HE DPM, just the HE, um, I'm curious to see how this thing stacks up in its current state. So we know when you look at HE DPM, you know the stuff that's up near the top, you know, Marceau, Small and Vampire, Haru, Gdansk, Daring, Far Sherman, Gearing, all that stuff. They're all up there. Um on HE DPM and Hayate sits at 11th. It's right there just under uh, Lushan. Um, so we're looking at giving this thing a three tenths, so, so about a seven and a half percent buff. So uh, you're looking at giving it about 15,000 more. You're looking at getting it up a little right at to where gearing is basically. On a DPM level, uh, you're looking at getting it up to where gearing is, and uh, because the shells, the HE shells, hit a little harder, you have a little better alpha strike than something like the gearing does, because there's this that Japanese uh, HE that hits a little harder. So okay, that's uh, that's interesting. We'll have to see if that makes Hayate more playable. Um, now that you you're a better gunboat and a better torp boat. So uh, okay, we'll uh, we'll check it. Uh, next up, Sekiryu. This is the super carrier, the super Haku. Tactical torpedo bombers damage reduced from ninety three hundred to seventy five hundred. Wow, that's what eighteen. That's like a twenty percent nerf, roughly. Um, okay, 
Tactical aircraft rocket parameters changed. Damage reduced from 3150 to 2850 and fire chance reduced from 14 to 12. So you're getting, what about a 15% fire chance reduction uh, on that and damage reduction, you're getting a little, little under 10% reduction, say nine-ish in that vicinity uh, reduction. So big nerf. Clemson stock torpedo reload time increased from 40 to 44. Researchable torpedo reload time increased from 66 to 70. Okay. Um, has the Clemson torpedoes been overperforming that well? I know Cle Clemson is known as a seal clubbing boat, one of them. And I mean, I know if you're not afraid to be spotted, so if you can sail into a ship especially a battleship when its turrets are turned the other way. Yeah, you can ruin his day because he can't hit you with anything but secondaries. Um, but the guns on the Clemson are the really, really good feature and why people seal club with the thing. Uh, so interesting that they're, and, and this isn't a huge nerf. You know, you're talking, what, on the researchable, you're talking about a four second. So what, about six or seven percent? interesting definitely very uh interesting let's see what else california tier 7 california main battery reload time reduced from 34.2 to 32.5 bravo um i've been saying on certain ones of these ships it's like why the hell do we need the reload so high well i mean i know that's not a lot but you're getting a two second buff there so yeah what six and a half percent or so somewhere in that neighborhood um and also changed engine parameters the acceleration time for forward and reverse movement was significantly reduced now wait a minute let me think about that acceleration time reduced so if the time is reduced that means it accelerates faster okay the new acceleration settings are similar to those on Kansas, Minnesota, and Vermont. So this thing's basically getting like battlecruiser acceleration. They're basically saying, okay, California is the, you know, is the slow, um, younger sister to Kansas, uh, which makes some sense. Uh, so that's interesting. So now California at least can accelerate. And we can get more shells downrange. That's interesting. Because I think really the main thing that California even has going for it is uh, doesn't it have pretty good AA and maybe even a reload, bo reload booster, at least for its tier, something like that. Okay. Um, tier 7 Florida. Main battery reload time reduced another nice buff from 33.5 to 32 seconds. Hey, that is just in time for White Coat to get one of those out of a Santa container. We may have to do a div of those things. The Florida boys, the Gator boys. Um, interesting. So that's also great. Again, I've wondered, you know, I, I always use the argument, if you go to Tier 6 and look at the Arizona or the New Mexico and compare that to the Fuso, they all have 356 millimeter guns, which both have pretty good pin for the AP. But Fuso reloads in what, 28 seconds? And it has, is it 12 guns? It's, I think it's 12 guns. We well, got 12 guns on these battleships. Why do they have to reload in 36 or 34 or 35? And they have less range than the Fuso's got. Again, makes no sense. Um, so I don't understand why that reload can't be closer to 30 seconds. So anyway, Tier 7 Indianapolis. Also interesting, main battery reload time reduced from 14.3 to 13 seconds. See, Indianapolis is one of my favorite Tier 7 cruisers. Uh, you know, it just got some buffs recently to improve the nose armor, which was absolutely horrific for a heavy cruiser. And now it's in line with what other tier seven heavy cruisers have, where you can actually tank some stuff. 
I think it's got 25 millimeter armor now on the nose. And uh, now you're going to give me a DPM buff? I'm all in. I'm all in on that, man. I'll, I'll have to be playing it some more. All right, another, another uh, carrier. Let's see what they do here. Hornet. Nice, strong carrier. Characteristics of tactical bomber squadrons change. Bomb damage increased from 7,300 to 8,000. This is on the tactical bombers? Are you shitting me? Fire chance increase from 41 to 45. So the pain is real here, folks. Um, since when did their tactical bomber squadron become underpowered? If you drop that thing right, I mean, you can just bitch slap destroyers with it. Um, man, that's nasty. I mean, that's, I, I, I don't, you're, you're giving us these other nerfs on the carriers. Why are we buffing this? And it's a tactical squadron. I mean, oh boy. I don't, this one, uh, this one, I don't understand. I'll, I'll say that <laughs> freely. I don't understand this one. This makes no sense. Next up, Nebraska, Delaware, and Louisiana. Okay, the pseudo CVs. Change the parameters of the stock and researchable dive bombers. Okay. Bombers are now equipped with the JTO, but so they now have jet assisted takeoff boosters. And the HE bomb penetration increased from 42 to 53, uh, 53 millimeters. So that means they can just get to you to maul you that little bit faster and that little bit harder. Just what these things needed. Great. Let's just hope people keep trying to play them as carriers and not battleships where they end up being not effective anyway. Um, that's, I don't understand this one either. This is another one that's... Okay. Annapolis. Interval between individual shots in burst increased. One to one and a half cent per se uh, seconds. I mean, that's... That's kind of a going in the right direction there. Surveillance radar consumable action time decreased from 40 to 35 seconds. That's interesting. Um, yeah, going in the right direction. Annapolis is pretty freaking ridiculous. Um, it's one of the boats you're going to see frequently in, what, clan battles or, or those type things. So that's, you know, there's a reason for that. And uh, that's that's an okay move. That one... That one I'm good with. Uh, and I don't have the Annapolis, so I'm, I'm going to hate I would Once that change is in place, I'll never get to play it in that previous state. Next up, oh boy, the good old United States Super Carrier. Uh, tactical Torpedo Bombers. Torpedo Damage Reduced. Bravo once again from 7,600 to 6,133. Wow. That's what, 15... Almost 1,500 reduction. That's like right at 20%. That's, uh, that's freaking impressive. That is freaking impressive. Okay. Next up is the Tier 5 Russian cruiser, the McCoy. Main battery accuracy settings change. They will now be similar to other cruisers on Tier 5. I believe, isn't this the one that just has the, like, absolute shit dispersion uh i think it is we're gonna have to look that one up real quick on um i need to see tier five uh cruisers we gotta look that one up on ship tool i mean seriously um where is it our dispersion yeah look i'll bring i'll bring this up so you can see it Look where McCoyan is sitting. Here's your horizontal dispersion over here. 140 meters compared to everybody else that's at 116. And Furitaka, that's a little better because that's what the Japanese do. And look at the vertical dispersion. 83 meters. 83 meters compared to 66. Now, these guns will smack the piss out of you with AP in particular. If you're not careful, this is tier five. These things have some, some good pin. Um, as a matter of fact, 
Let me look and see what the, the pin. I mean, yeah, look, look at the pin value on this on this thing. 180 millimeter guns and at 12 kilometers, you have a 233 millimeter pin, which is way better even than Furitaka and Furitaka can can do some big time smacking of stuff with its AP. So this thing, if if you go in and now give it um, a normal dispersion that's going to be somewhere closer to 116, and especially if they give it a normal vertical dispersion, oh, dear Lord. I mean, because think about it. Your Furitaka's down here at 105 and 60. If they get it to in here where Chung King is at 116 and 68, you'll have a ship that can put a hurt uh, on some people. And I'll definitely be interested to play this thing some at Tier 5 to see what it does. So that one's one that's uh, interesting. Kind of looking forward to that. Kind of looking forward to it. Okay, let's keep going. Tier 8 Kiev. We just finished grinding the Kiev on our alternate account. Uh, just in time for them to buff it, it looks like. So the stock and researchable hull uh, HP pools are increasing, and it's increasing on the, we'll, we'll talk about the researchable hull because that's the important one, from 16,200 to 17,500. So that's 1,300 that this thing is increasing. So uh, what is that, about 8%? Um Somewhere in that neighborhood, that's that's a, a decent amount. Uh decent amount. You're still not probably gonna be in the upper here if I had to say. If we look at um our DDs at tier eight and we look at our health. Uh this thing going up to seventeen five hundred puts it just above silly wangy, but it's still below the French ones, the fantastic and terrible. It's it's just about a thousand below them. And I mean you got stuff like the the GJ Merker sitting at twenty two three. So yeah, you're not making it overpowered by doing that. And uh you know, it kinda needs it because as I've been talking about in my streams um a year or so ago, maybe a little longer, you know, you could play the Russian or the French gunboats and just run full throttle broadside to everything and nobody, uh, very few people could hit you because people couldn't lead right. Now about 80% of the player base can lead properly with their shells. People have figured it out. It's been around long enough. Those that use their brain at all are figuring it out. So, uh, yeah. Next up, Kabarosk. I'd... From my view, I don't know if there's anything they can do to save this thing other than giving it maneuverability back, but let's look and see. Repair party consumable replaced with specialized repair teams with the following parameters. 225 per second for 20 seconds. So reload time 80 seconds to recharge it. So let's see. So you're going to heal what about 4500 if you're going for 20 seconds. You're going to heal about 4500. So I'm not sure exactly where it sits now. Um the Cabba Kaba has a stock health of 22.5, which is nowhere near the top. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Let's see if this thing tells me how much it heals. The way they tell you on here is a little bit different. See, they give you a, a heal percentage of 14%. Um, I said it had 22.5. Yeah, so that's somewhere around 3,000-ish, and now it's going to heal about 4,500. So, yeah, you're getting a, a pretty... Good chunk, same amount of charges. Um, how about the reload time on this? 80 second reload, action time 28 seconds. So the action time's shorter, but you get a bigger 
heal per second. So it's faster heal, which is good. You can get those points in faster. So yeah, you're going to heal about 4,500 as opposed to healing you know, 3,000 ish that we're doing now. So, okay. Okay. Let's see. I, I still don't think this will save the thing. It might make it a little, little bit better, but it's not going to save the thing. Next up is Petro. Base detectability range increased. We have a nerf on the Petro, folks. A nerf on the Petro. All other detectability ranges adjust accordingly. So this thing is going to go out to 16.3 kilometers. So what's that going to make your concealment now when you build into it? Um, Thirteen point two. So that means you can't really stealth the radar with this thing very easily anymore. Uh because before, you know, at fifteen three Yeah, you're right at just barely above twelve kilometers and uh with your your rendering delays and things i mean you know it's you're not going to see it until it's about 12 kilometers away anyway so yeah it's it's while the petro technically could not stealth radar technically um it was right on the edge and now it's going to be a kilometer away from that so that'll be a help maybe some people will be able to see the damned thing before it radars them now so uh, yeah Sevastopol. Now, I don't have Sevastopol and haven't played it. Haven't heard all that many really favorable things about it um, in looking at other streamers' reviews of it. So let's see what they did to that. Main battery reload time reduced from 25 to 24 seconds. Eh, what is that? About 2%? one second um so yeah or four percent maybe might be four percent but in any case you get the idea it's not a very big change change the parameters of the repair party consumable action time reduced from 90 to 60 cool down down time reduced from 180 to 120 charges increased from three to four so Basically, they're letting you heal less, but more often. So you only get two-thirds of the heal you were getting, but you can do it, you know, a third quicker. Um, and you get an extra charge. I don't know. I don't see this making a, a significant impact on, on the uh, Sevastopol. We'll see because the, the proof's in the proof's in the play. So we'll see what happens when it gets played. But I, I don't see that uh, happening. Next up is the Zorki. The, uh, the Delny clone, which, you know, Delny, I still don't totally understand the Delny and why it is such a worse gunboat than the Kaba from a DPM standpoint. But that's beside the point. Um, Zorki, number of shots in burst firing mode decrease from four to three so yeah i guess the zorki could fire four shots in a burst now it can only fire three so they must have seen some uh negative impact out of that or at least felt like they did okay next up is colossus ah here we go colossus changed the parameters of attack aircraft number of rockets reduced from six to five per plane so Wow, that's a 17% reduction in the number of rockets. That's a 17% DPM reduction right there. The size of the aiming ellipse increased by 20%. So bigger attack area. The amount of rockets that are guaranteed to hit closer to the center of the aiming ellipse reduced from 50 to 33. So a, a nerf to the uh, accuracy of the rockets. So 
less rockets are hitting where you where you aim at the center of the ellipse so they're distributing them more um and they're making the ellipse they're landing in bigger and you're getting a 17 percent damage reduction so that's a huge huge nerf right there for colossus as this ship demonstrated excessive effectiveness with its ap rockets at times we decided to tone down the damage potential of this type of armament in addition to increasing the size of the ellipse making it harder pinpoint specific enemy ship parts they've decreased decreased number of rockets that are guaranteed to hit closer to center thus reducing the potential of each strike to do citadel damage as rockets are going to spread more evenly across the whole aiming zone now at the same time we expect the increased aiming ellipse to lead to a somewhat easier experience when dropping enemy ships due to allowing for a slightly larger margin of error for the reticle attack okay um yeah from what i saw and again i think i've only played this boat once or twice but from what i've seen from others videos of this ship uh it was excessively effective if now you you had to be broadside though uh light cruisers could be nuked out of existence practically but i think the big thing is carriers uh this thing was really smashing carriers hard and you know being one of the protected classes so to speak um we don't want that to happen so yeah i think that's i think that's as much as anything all right now continuing on i'm telling you folks this is a huge we're going to require a little bit of liquid refreshment this uh is a huge dev blog huge bunch of balance change so tier nine um british battlecruiser duncan main battery load reload time decreased from 31 to 29 and a half seconds wow repair party consumable reload time increased from 80 to 100 seconds okay so i think doesn't this thing get a super hill or something close to a super hill um let me um Let me look at the UK battleships real quickly and look at the uh, St. Vincent. Yeah, 40%, a 40% heal. How does that compare to Conqueror? Same heal, 20, 20 second heal, 40% with an 80 second cooldown. So basically you got that Conqueror heal uh, but you cannot use it quite as often. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, you know, the DPM will be welcome. I don't know if it needed DPM, but it'll be welcome. Uh, the repair party thing, we'll, we'll see. They are battle cruisers. We'll see what that change brings. Tier 10 St. Vincent, repair party consumable. Reload time increased again from 80 to 100 seconds. So again, um, you know, that super heal you don't get quite as often. Base detectability range increased from 15.8 to 16.2. Yeah, because wasn't St. Vincent pretty stealthy? Um, yeah, it had a, like a 12.8 concealment. Now you're going to go up into the low 13s, like around 13, 1 or 2. Um, so that's a little something. It'll still be plenty effective. I don't see, I don't see that 400 meters of concealment being a huge game changer. Um, I see the repair party being a little bit more of a game changer, potentially. But I know on these ships, a lot of people like to hold the... Uh, the hill anyway to get that uh, more AR get their DPM up more so uh, we'll see very interesting tier 10 the Malta okay here's another fairly strong um, carrier torpedo bombage, bomber damage increased from 5933 to 6533 okay so a 600 
a little over a 10% buff in torpedo damage. Number of bombs in payload on dive bombers decreased from four to three. So that's a that's a 25% nerf on those AP bombs. Wow. So, okay. So you get, okay, I guess they felt like, oh, we can't just give it a nerf. We can't take away all that AP bomb damage. We got to give you something back. And so you're going to get it back in the torpedo bombers, which, by the way, aren't too bad on the Malta. Uh, don't sleep on those. Okay, now on to Tier 10 British Carry the Eagle. Tactical attack aircraft rocket parameters changed. Damage reduced from 2350 to 2050, and fire chance reduced from 9 to 8%. So that's like an 11% fire chance reduction. And what, that's about 300. Um, damage per rocket reduction which is going to be something a little under 15 percent maybe about 13 to 14. so that's a, a pretty good nerf tactical dive bomber parameters change damage reduced from 7900 to 6400 and fire chance reduced from 45 to 36 percent that is a nine percent fire chance reduction which is, uh, what, like 20%? Yeah, that's 20%. And then the damage reduction is, what, 1,500? So again, that's almost 20%. It's a lot. So pretty big uh, nerfs there to the Eagle. <clears throat> Let's see what else. Tier 5 French uh, DD the Jaguar. Torpedo parameters changed. Reload time decreased. Okay. From 90 to 75 seconds. That's a that's a, a pretty big buff. Range decreased. Oh. From eight to seven and a half. Damage reduced and speed decreased. So damage reduced from 14.8 to 11.2. And speed decreased from 68 to 57. Jeez. So was Jaguar that strong of a torp boat? Have I missed something? Whenever I played this thing? Did I miss something? Is I did not realize Jaguar was an overpowered torp boat. Apparently they supposedly have something telling them it is. So basically they're saying you can have torps more often, but they'll be a little bit shorter range. And we're going to give it about a, wow, that's like a 30... 3,500 plus damage nerf. Uh, wow, that's over 20%. And a speed decrease of 11 knots. Holy crap. I mean, that's, that's a bunch. That's nearly 20% there. Jeez. Okay, who knew? Tier 6 Bairn, the, uh, the French... Um, carrier with the crazy spotter planes increase the dispersion of skip bombers by 20 percent so apparently it was showing excessive effectiveness attacking zds so they decided to decrease its attacking potential against smaller targets by decreasing the accuracy of the skip bombers that should bring it more in line with other carriers of the tier okay whatever you say but, uh, yeah, it's a pretty big dispersion um, decrease. All right, up next, the Tier uh, 10 Supership Conde. Main battery reload time reduced from 15 to 14 seconds. What? Bonus to maximum main battery shell dispersion fired during burst fire reduced from 40 to 20. Okay. So they're saying we're going to we're basically going to nerf that extra accuracy you get during your burst fire. We're going to cut that in half. But to make up for it, we're going to, we're going to give you a, a one second better reload or a 6.7% buff there. Okay, I don't know. Conde's strong regardless. So Next up is Tier 3, which I'm, I'm not too worried about Tier 3, but the Nazario Sorrow. 
Main battery reload time decreased from 6.5 to 6.4. Yeah, I mean, that's not much of anything. Sap shell damage decreased from 2600 to 2350. So apparently maybe the sap was a little strong on this bad boy. Don't know. Tier 6 AVR. Now we're getting into the Italians here. The Italian. Man, I'm, how many ships are on this list? Holy crap. All right. Tier 6 AVR. Researchable torpedo range reduced from 10 to 8. Wow, okay. Changed parameters of emergency engine power consumable. So reduced charges from 6 to 4 and action time from 25 to 20. So were people yoloing with this thing that much i don't see how these ships are not particularly they're nothing like the yolo amelia let's put it that way that's the best way we can put it holy crap wow uh, yeah mtn i don't know were too many people farming torps and jaguar i don't know how you would uh but wow uh leone now here's one that could use a buff if any ship ever could main battery Reload time reduced from 9.5 to 8.5. There you go. Needed it. Uh, still don't know that it's going to make it. It's definitely not going to make it good. I don't even think it's going to make it playable, but it's something. Torpedo launcher reload time reduced from 50 to 45. And doesn't this thing have the weird, like, longer range torps? And it's only like, was it two, two? Double launchers. I have to. I have to find this thing. Uh, the Leone. Leone. Yeah. What does it have on torps? It has. Yeah. It has two by two launchers. So you only get four torps. They are a twelve kilometer range, and they do decent damage, but they only go fifty one knots. So basically, they're saying you can throw a few more of them out there. Five, that's a five second improvement, so that's ten percent improvement, and that's a whole one second, so that's just slightly over a ten percent improvement to main battery. So there you go, and don't forget the thing does have like eight guns, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know, we may see more of them, and we may not. People may try and say, nope, doesn't do enough for me. All right, the battleship tier eight Vittorio Veneto. Hallelujah. Something we've been asking for, a Sigma increase on some of these Italian battleships. Sigma value increase from 1.7 to 1.8. Stock hull rudder shift time reduced from 21.7 to 20.2. Researchable uh, rudder shift reduced from 15.5 to 14.4. So more maneuverable, more accurate guns. Okay, okay. Golf clap. We're okay with that. We're good with that. Tier 9 Lepanto, stock hull rudder shift time reduced from 23.3 to 20.9. Um, yeah. And researchable rudder shift time reduced from 16.7 to 14.9. So another good one. Yes. I don't know what the uh, Sigma value is, uh, but apparently they didn't feel the need to uh, make it better. And Tier 10 Cristoforo Colombo and whatever Amerigo Vespucci is. We'll, hopefully they'll tell us. Yeah, I think they're going to tell us here. Sigma value increased from 1.5 to 1.6. Firing angles increased by 10 degrees. Rudder shift time reduced from 18 to 15.3 seconds. So wait a second. Isn't this the parameters that they just gave? Um... The new, uh, what do you call that thing? The new uh, premium tier 10 Italian battleship that's like a, a better Colombo. Um, it had these better things on it as well. So now they're passing some of these changes on the Colombo. So the biggest difference in the ships is going to be the types of secondaries. And it does say that the Amerigo Vespucci is a clone of the Colombo used for testing the unique upgrade, which they're going to be doing. Be interesting to see what that's going to be like. Um, next up, now we're going to the Pan Asians. Man, a little more liquid refreshment here. Dalian, 
Tier 9. I actually don't mind the Dalian. Main battery reload reduced from 5.2 to 4.9. So a, another little buff to the Dalian. What is that? A 3 tenths? So about a 6% buff? Fine. We're okay with that. Not a, ga not a game changer, but, but improvement. Sun Yat Sin at Tier 9. We recently played this. Um, had a decent game in it. And here you go. Actually, this is a buff that I don't disagree with. Uh, main battery AP shells damage increase from 13,000 to 14,500. Well, it has, uh, what, 456 millimeter guns, whatever it is, on it. I mean, I wondered why the AP shell damage was so low considering, you know, the size of the gun. So now that has is going to be corrected, apparently. Uh, next up is the Kunming. Um, I can't remember everything the Kunming does. I just know it's a Pan-Asian um, Super DD. Uh, base detectability range reduced from 7.8 to 7.4 and all other detectability ranges adjusted according. So 7.8 to 7.4. That's going to be a 6 kilometer so it must have been around 6.3, and now they're going to get it down to 6. So interesting. Uh, another buff. All right, now we're getting near the end of this thing. Finally, folks, Tier 8 Split uh, European DD. Main battery reload time reduced from 4 to 3.6. Well, I've often said, you know, that some of these ships, I'm not sure why I would want to play it over the regular line. Uh, that may give this one a little more reason to do so so reduce the main battery reload time from 4 to 3.6 that's a 10 percent buff folks so a 10 percent dpm buff for the guns nice tier 9 lambros katsanas main battery reload time reduced from 4 4 to 3 8 so that's a uh wow that's like that's a 16th Ooh. um that's what 12 13 percent or so that's a pretty big buff so this is a pretty good buff to the guns on both of these, and these are the ones that have right the yeah, the the five second radar as we call it. So yeah, interesting. Uh, and lastly, Numancia, a Spanish cruiser. Change parameters of burst fire mode. Remove the increased shell dispersion debuff. Okay. Okay. So I'm guessing once you. When you use the burst fire mode, you'll be more accurate. Okay. Okay. Not a big thing, but it's something. So, um, that's it. That's the big dev blog from, uh, from yesterday, January 24th. Fast recap. We're going to try and do a speed recap. Numancia, slight, slight, um, Slight nerf, actually. Um, the um, Tier 8 Split and Tier 9 Lamb Bros Katsana, slight buff to the gun DPM. Kunmig, um, buff to concealment. Sun Yat Sin, buff to AP shell damage. Dalian, buff to DPM, gun DPM or reload time. Uh, Columbo, buff to the gun accuracy. The firing angles and the rudder shift. Lepanto, uh, rudder shift buff. Vittorio Veneto, gun accuracy and rudder shift buff. Leone at tier six. Uh, pretty big buffs to the torpedo reload and the main battery gun reload. Tier six AVR nerfs to the torpedo range and to the um, engine boost. What else? Uh, tier 3, Nazario Saro. Uh, slight buff to the gun DPM, or reload, I should say, but a decrease in sap damage. So it's an overall, for, for sap, it's an overall nerf in a way. Now, going up, Conde gets a buff to the main battery reload and a nerf to the 
uh, burst fire dispersion improvement. Tier 6 Bairn, um, nerf to the skip bomber accuracy. Tier 5 Jaguar, nerf to the torpedoes in my view, even though they reload faster. It's way slower, way less damage, less range, so big nerf. The uh, British Supercarrier Eagle, um, big nerfs to the uh, tactical squadrons. The Malta inexplicably gets a, well, uh, not necessarily inexplicably, it gets a buff to torpedo damage at the expense of a big nerf to the amount of bombs your AP bombers drop. St. Vincent and Duncan uh, both get um, repair party reload time nerfs. Uh, Vincent also gets a concealment nerf and Duncan gets a main battery reload boost. Colossus gets a big nerf to the rocket planes. That's the best way to say that one. Zorky gets a uh, big nerf to the burst firing mode. mode. Sevastopol um, gets a slight nerf to the, the gun DPM and kind of a side, not, not really even a buff, just kind of a side movement to the um, repair party. Uh, Petro Pavlos gets a big nerf to concealment. Kaba gets a buff to its um, uh, heal. Don't know how much that'll help, but it gets it. Kiev gets a buff to the health, to its health. Mikoyan gets a big buff to gun accuracy and to reload, and a slight increase in AP shell damage. That thing could be dangerous. Now going to the U the United States ships and the United States supercarrier. Big nerf to the tactical bombers. Annapolis nerf to the uh, burst firing intervals and to the radar duration. The Nebraska, Delaware, and Louisiana hybrid American battleships, well, they're getting a, a big boost to their bombs. More penetration and jet-assisted takeoff. Those are two big buffs. Hornet gets inexplicably gets a buff to tactical bomb damage and fire chance. Don't understand that one. Indianapolis gets a DP or a gun uh, reload buff, buff. Wonderful. Florida gets a gun reload buff. Nice. California gets both a gun reload buff and an acceleration buff. So welcome to the family. Kansas, Minnesota, and Vermont are saying welcome to the family, little sister. Clemson gets a torpedo reload uh, nerf for some reason. Don't know. Then up to the Japanese ships, the Securyu supercarrier gets a big nerf to torpedo damage and, uh, and a nerf to tactical uh, rocket planes, uh, both on damage and fire chance. Hayate gets a decent little reload time buff for the guns and uh, gets its torp reload booster separated from smoke. So now I guess you get both. Uh, which will be interesting. And lastly, Ryujo gets a nerf to its torpedoes, um, to the damage and also to the um, prep time for the airplanes. So there you go. That was the quick blow through of balance changes in public test 13.1. We will definitely be playing these ships uh, on stream after, um, after it goes live. So be looking for that now. Uh, that was a lot to go through and, and unpack, but now it's time to finally get out there and play some darn World of Warships instead of talking about it. So let's go and do it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to see notifications of future videos, just ring the bell. Until next time, Tater Dog says, woof.